Okay, everyone, just like I said, after area was volume. And in today's slides, you heard Ms. Larimore speak about three-dimensional shapes, meaning a volume of something. We're going to measure its length, its width, and its height. Now, because math has the commutative property of multiplication, you may call that width, I may call that length, the number might change, but the order in which it is will still get the same exact result. We know we can script the order of our numbers when multiplying and still get the same number. Six times four, 24. Flip it around, four times six, 24, okay? So remember, V for a volume equals length times width times height. Again, everyone says, well, Mr. G, where did you get the L from? Where did you get the W from? Well, here is a rectangular box. The volume gives us how much space is inside the box. We want to learn how much stuff we can put inside of here. And there are definitely real-world applications for this. So let's just use this first one as an example. So here I have my height. I'm calling it 5. I'm calling my width. 12 and my length back is going to be 6. Put it 6. So to make it easier for you, we'll say the length is 6. That's where my L comes from. 6. And in this case, we're using inches, right? We wouldn't use feet or yards or miles because this object is too small. So my length is 6. That's my L. I'm going to multiply it by my width. We said my width here is 12. And then my height, my up and down, is going to be 5. So I have three dimensions. Three dimensional shape, three measurements. Therefore, I'm going to have that answer to be cubed. That means there'll be a small 3 over it, as opposed to the area, which was 2 length and width, and we had it squared. So here I have 6 times 12 times 5. For those of you who know your math facts, this is going to come a little easier. Some of you may want to use a calculator. I know that 5 times 12 instantly is 60. And then I bring down my 6. I know that 6 times 6 is 36, but I have to account for my power of 10 because it's 10 times greater. So what's 10 times greater than 36? 360. It's 360 inches and it's cubed. So that is how my answer would look. So the volume of that box is 360 cubic inches. That's the space inside. So now when would you use volume? You use it a lot in the real world. One example might be if you had an aquarium and you wanted to know how many gallons, how many cubic gallons are inside that aquarium. Therefore, you could buy the right type of fish. If you have not enough space, you might put fish in there that wouldn't grow or would die because they didn't have enough oxygen or enough room to live appropriately. <laughs> Another thing we could use is brownies, right? Cooking. A lot of volume in cooking. A lot of volume in liquids. So here's my brownie pan. Or I can make it a cake pan. Now, I have to get the dimensions of this thing. If I know its dimensions, I know how much batter I can put in appropriately. Because I'm sure you've had brownies that are really thin and kind of hard maybe not enough batter to fill it appropriately, or you've seen a cake or a bread overflow and it's been too much. So in this case, this, it might have the numbers on it, but I did measure it earlier. Yep, it totally has the numbers right on it. So this is gonna be 13. They're telling me it's 13, right? That's my width. So where's my W come from? 13, it's width. And then the height is gonna say two. So my height is two. And the length back is five, five. So this pan, this Pyrex pan is five inches long, 13 inches wide and two inches high. So I'm gonna find out how much I can fit in here. So now I do the math. I know that five times 13 is 65. 10 times five is 50, five times three is 15. 15 plus 50 is 65. Bring down my 2. 65 times 2. Well, I know that 60 times 2 is 120, plus 10 more is 130. So that's going to equal 130 cubic inches, right? 130 inches cubed.
So now I know exactly what the space is inside of that Pyrex dish, so I can measure appropriately when I add in the brownie mix or the cake mix or whatever you're going to make. Knowing something's volume is really important. Even if you need to know how much liquid can fit into a quart jar or into a jar that you don't know the size of, you can get the volume and find out how much appropriate liquid can go in, how much you should have per day, you know, how many ounces of fluid you should have in a day, ounces turning into gallons, etc. So learning the volume of something and remembering that the L, the W, and the H, one is each different measurement. If you multiply all three, you'll get the volume for that measurement. I hope this helps. Make sure you're using this to help you with your slides. And I'll make another video tomorrow. If you have any questions, please ask. Have a great day.